again, FlossTube. It's me, Michelle, also known as the Schnook Crafter, here and on Instagram, and welcome to FlossTube number four. It's been a couple weeks. It's good to be back talking. Um, I've, this, is, this is actually the fourth time I have sat down to film this. I've had technical difficulties with each and every previous attempt. So we're trying a different location because where I was before, it, all of a sudden we were picking up this low buzzing sound, the whole audio, and I could not, I could not deal with it. The third one I thought I, I was okay with, like that we managed, but as I was editing, I was like, nope, I, I can't. It's not that. It's not as bad as the other two, but it's not working for me. So here we are, different, different location again, and hopefully this time no buzzing, because I really want to get this posted, because I've got a lot to show you and talk about. Um, life has been the same as always. Nothing too exciting. Uh, continuing to organize my craft room, my craft room, my craft corner. Um, instead of unpacking all my yarn and fabric and getting that organized, I actually de-kitted all my kits because I was getting very frustrated with my, because I'd have like, I have like one thing of DMC, right? And then it's in three different projects. When I sat down to work on that project, I was having to hunt it down and I got really frustrated so I ended up taking everything out and relabeling and re-going through my Lord Libidin, like Excel worksheet and just getting it all re-categorized. Um, it was a fantastic use of my time. <laughs> it wasn't really, but it's kind of nice to have it done. It's cut down on the mass, and there are some projects that I'm not working on as frequently, so they didn't really need to have the DMC in there. And I had, they had been kitted up before I set up my, my DMC filing system, so it was nice to get it all on the same page and start fresh. And, you know, as it is spring, nice to get some spring cleaning and organizing and all that done, and hopefully I will be able to keep on top of that. So that was that big thing. I, I want to do some stitchy kindness. I want to give a big shout out to a couple different floss tubers and people on Instagram. They've just been fantastic people. I want to shout out to these 20 stitches. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that a couple days ago was the Trans Day of Visibility. And Dee put a lot of work into organizing information and sharing and promoting other people. And they are... It was really a good resource for us that are not part of that community but want to support the community. They also released um, the second in their Let's Make a Statement um, patterns. I know I've already completed the first one, so I will be working on that second one. And what, yes, once I've resigned myself to the gold satin floss again and yeah, I'm mentally fortifying myself for that gold satin floss. <laughs> uh, so that was. There was that. I want to give a shout out to uh, the Instagram well, no, sorry. she's not on Instagram, but the designer Kiro Kiro Cabinet Crafts. Um, she ran a contest and I won. So I've got Le Chat and the La, La Lune and Le Chat Noir, which is a black cat with a moon, and I'm very excited to stitch that piece. And I I love winning giveaways. I mean, who doesn't love winning a giveaway? But I it's, it's nice. I want to shout out to Stitchy Ren who. I've also just discovered recently, and I, they have a lot of like video game inspired pieces, and they have a bunch of free ones on their Ko-Fi. Um, they have some Sailor Moon ones that I'm really excited about, and if I could figure out Twitch, I want they do they do like live streams on Twitch, I think, or like live floss tubes, which I think is really cool. It doesn't really work with my schedule, but I really want to tune in because they seem like a cool person, and I want to, you know see the live and how that works. Uh, Mar. Marjorie, I want to give a shout out to Marjorie Made Stitches. We've had some fantastic conversations about books on Instagram. And like, she has fantastic taste in, in uh, design, like designs and color palettes and things like that. And also a very fabulous taste in books, if I may so, so say so myself, because we have the exact same one. <laughs> and you know, I know I'm forgetting people because there's so many fantastic, wonderful people in the community. So if I didn't mention you specifically, it. Uh, so sorry, I think you're all fantastic, and I'm just having a fantastic time talking to everyone on Instagram. So it was not meant to exclude anyone, I, that's just the top of my head, who I guess who I've interacted with in the last couple days. Uh, so moving on to what I've been working on. This is always Death to the Dictator by Crafty Yams. It is a piece that she designed to raise funds as a stitch for Iran, and I was working on it as my Stitch Asia, and I also really focused on it on International Women's Day, because I really wanted to get the face of this lioness done. And it is going good. Um, I can't know if you can see. There's a bunch of different shades of green I'm working on right now, and 
I'm just trying to get that done because then I can just block, fill in the black, the yellow, and this like beigey cream. So I've just been working on that. This once this page is done, I'm like all the other pages aren't full pages, so that will be exciting. I'm so close, and I've been really working on it. So that was the first piece I worked on a little bit. I brought out the Spooky Moon Babe again. I'm close to another page finish on that. Um, this was one I signed up to test stitch through one of the Facebook groups, one of the many cross stitch Facebook groups, and I haven't heard or seen anything since that she posted, but her original artwork was really cool, so I've just been trying to work on this because I've, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit ashamed of how long it's taken me, but considering I haven't seen anyone else, I don't know if I feel alone in that shame. It's a very large, complex piece. Um, it's going to be fantastically beautiful once it's done, and I kind of just want to be like, hey, I didn't forget, I didn't flake. It was just a lot more black stitching than I thought, and I overestimated my ability to stitch 310 on 18 count repetitively. So yeah, working on that, I'm aiming to get a page, a page and a half finished, so the whole top row, by the end of April. I went to visit my parents again, as I do multiple times a month. And on my car ride, I brought to this one. It's the Wakanda Forever piece by Park Harper Bart on Gumroad. I want to get this one finished so I can buy more of his patterns. It's a beautiful, nice, geometric, bright, bold piece. I'm doing it for my partner. Cat here. <laughs> the only issue is it's on black. On black, Ida, and I just I struggle to see it all the time. So i also been working on getting this one done. Um, I actually went thrift shopping the other day and I found him a bunch of Black Panther pieces, so I think this piece needs to be done. Oh, speaking of Black Panthers, buddy, you're not allowed on the table. Hey. <laughs> uh, speaking of Black Panthers, I just, <laughs> yep, I uh, want to get that piece done so he can have his whole little display unit. I'm sure that'll probably be the most aesthetic um, <laughs> photo I take of a finished object. I, oh, if you want to see beautiful aesthetic pieces, check out. Oh my gosh. I'm liking her name. It has blueberries in it, and she's from Rap. And she lives in Toronto. She's gonna watch this and should have got this, but as soon as I said aesthetic Instagram photos, I was like, yes. Yes, she. I'm gonna have to link that because hers are so fantastic. I'm so inspired and I don't just beautiful Instagram posts of her work. Uh, my second car ride piece was the pigeon coops I'd rather be hiking. So it'll look like this when it's all done. And I just managed to fill in some more of the green. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> Um, just nice, it's simple, it's, you know, it's on a pattern so I don't need to use my phone or anything. I can just look at the paper, block fill in colors. So just working on getting that one done. It's small and I want to try and finish up some of my kits. I also started, this is the Halloween Crystal Ball by Tiny Modernist. So let me just zoom in there. Yeah, it's really funny because it's, it's Jack Lantern, right? But I've just mostly got the face. My cat just jumped on the table again. He is being very naughty. I cleared off the table so I could um, film this nicely, and he's taking advantage and getting stared down. <laughs> okay, so it's, I love this piece right now. It's very derpy because um, it's just the face. It's not filled in yet. Um, this was a three-part stitch along that she did, I want to say September or October, and I know she did, did a Christmas one, and then she just released a summer one. I'm just going to be doing this one. That's the only one I'm really interested in. And I just wanted to get that going because it's sitting kitted up and I'm trying to reduce my number of whips, I've decided. Um, so then, this was just the one-offs. My stitch along. I finished January for the Natural World by Pixel, Pixie Pixel Cross Stitch. Yeah, I mean, it's now April, so I'm a little bit behind, but... I finished January. We're gonna celebrate that. And one second, my cat, my cat. I am back, the cat is off the table and off from investigating the tripod. So I was talking about this piece, which is the Natural World Stitch Along by Pixie Pixel Cross Stitch. And I finished January and I'm using um, the Sulky Petite Blendables in Pine Palette and then I'm really loving it. Like it's a very subtle variegation, but it's gorgeous. It's easy to work with one strand. And I think I'm going to be looking to get more of those and for like monochromatic samplers like this because it's really a pleasure to work with and I'm enjoying the effect it has and it's very meditative to not have to like switch colors. And Stitch Alongs, I am almost done in January's um, Life is Sweet by Doreen Jones which is in the World of Cross Stitching magazine. I just have a little bit to fill in there and there 
and then that's done and then I'll be back to working on borders. That's what's really holding me up is borders. And I just want to get that one done and move on to the next section because I've been showing that since I started FlossTube and getting nowhere with it. And it would be kind of nice to be like, hey look, I actually did a whole other section. We can stop looking at this tart. <laughs> um, speaking of stitch alongs, I am working on the Rip My Whips, which is with Marjorie Made Stitches and the MN Stitcher. I am doing Frederick the Literate, which is just a nice full coverage one by Dimensions. And I just try and stitch a little bit on it every day, like 10, 20 stitches, like what just right in the morning. So I've got half a book and a little bit of bookcase. It's not very exciting. It's very stiff black Ida. It's gonna be around for a year because I'm not like I'm not trying to make it as a fast project, just like a morning ritual sort of deal. And that was kind of I think part of the point is just to encourage people to try full coverage and I'd stayed away from full coverage because of the time commitment, so I, I ended up picking up a smaller piece. And then I realized after I had a full coverage uh, Tamara P Pierce piece uh, by Taylor and Cromwell as a power knife bought on sale. <sighs> He's sitting below me, moving food around in his food dish. But, okay, yep, <laughs> we're just gonna go with that. What a lovely cat. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so I had another full coverage piece that I could have started, probably should have started because I already had it. And I might still start it because I do want it for my little library. Okay, yep. It's back on the table. I I know I know everyone just apologizes for their cats because I don't know what it is. He's wanted nothing to do with me all day and now here I am trying to do something and he's all up in my business and he's not even being cute about it. Like, you know, he could be here working the camera, but no. He's I don't know if that he just flopped down on the table and he's a big boy about twenty pounds, so You love them. You love them, but what, why now? What, why this moment? So moving on, I also um two of uh, two people I interact with a lot on Instagram. I actually met them through the Love Bugs Stitch Along. It's um, they started their own Stitch Along, a start along for April and May. It's a uh, Showers or Flowers, and it's run by Bridges Get Stitches and Cross Stitch Show, and they both actually design their own patterns, which are adorable, and I think that's amazing to design their own patterns. I don't have the eye for it. And it's basically to stitch something about showers or flowers for months of April and May. And I started this little piece today. It's, um, uh, it's, this is a part of it. It's going to be a whole string of flowers. So I'm just trying to on my cap to just I can see my camera going over and over at this point. Um, and yeah, so it, it's also in the World Across the Street magazine. It is the March 2020 year, um, issue. And there was two hoops. And then they did this thing where at the end they had like the, the roots trailing off the end. And I thought it was an interesting 3D, 3D concept of the hoop art. And I might do that. I have some ideas. And we'll see if I go 3D or if I just go basic flat. Uh, so those are the current stitch alongs I've got work on. I also want to join in on the All the Bees stitch along, which is hosted by the Fanciful Flamingo and Kathy Walker, which is just to stitch something with bees in it because I have a beautiful Emma Kong, get away from that lens, <laughs> Emma Congdon and stitch, or Citrovia, which was in one of the other cross stitch magazines. And it's just like a little bee sampler and I think it's really, really cute. And I, I would love to have an apiary, but I'm also slightly terrified of masses of bees, so I want the apiary without having to do the work. <laughs> and then also I want to join in the Best Bunny Stitch Along by the Novel Stitcher. Which also, congratulations on your engagement, and, and which is just to stitch something with... I have to grab the cat, he's... okay, yeah. <sighs> it, anyways, which is just to stitch something with a bunny in it, and the World of Cross Stitching Magazine has a series of three so far Peter Rabbit um, cross stitches and they're on the smaller side and I think they would look so sweet in my daughter's nursery. I actually, one of them, the older one, her, all her, a lot of her baby gifts were bunny themed. We didn't set the theme, we just got off Peter Rabbit stuff. And I actually have a really cute Peter Rabbit mug up in here that was a gift. Oh, I can't get it open. That was a fail. I have a really cute little Peter Rabbit mug up in there for when she's a little bit older to drink out of. So I think it'd just be really cute to have that themed. Okay, so you're gonna go. You gonna stop causing mischief? Okay. Okay, so. Uh, so yes, I you can't see it. I'll have to maybe. It'll show up in the Instagram photo of the finish. Let's go with that. 
So yeah, those are the stitch alongs I want to join in and projects. I also want to re work on reducing my um, pile of, of whips. I've, like, as I said, as I talk about like all the starts I'm about to do, it's mostly just because a lot of them I'm not giving as much love and attention. I don't want to like abandon them or anything like that. It's just like my system with the random wheel isn't working. I need. I don't think the whole whip go bingo board would work for me either. I've just got to, I think, settle down and just um, hyperfixate on them and get them finished. And I will work on that. I think Floss will help with that. So that's my plans. I want to talk the tiniest of hauls. I got this project bag from Heidi's Handmade. It is adorable. Look, look at that daisy vinyl. It is so sweet. And she was so sweet and kind. She included these little handmade floss drops. They're little cute little houses. They're very cute. I feel like I should talk to my mom to save her scrap from scrapbooking and then she can make me more of these. And the littlest pair of snips with a cover. And I love that it has a cover. Because my actual other pair doesn't have a cover. So that has been very handy. And I just like look how cute that is. And it's really nice, like this binding up here, it's like this little rainbow variegated thread, and it is just a nice perfect size. And it is my first project bag, so I am excited to be joining that. I can already tell I love the zippers. And well, uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I spent summer March experimenting with dyeing my own Ida. And I've already posted the reveal there because, you know, it took a while to get this filmed and I wanted to show off. And so I'll just do a quick little flip here. And it's just, I uh, had some white opalescent ones and I used the purple rip dye and I put snow on top and let it melt. So it kind of does like a tie dye effect, but it's like slow and like a little bit more random, so you don't quite know how it's going to turn out. Like I did get some like yellowy spots here and there, and that's just because dye is made of a compound rather than, um, you know, a straight color, so sometimes it separates. Um, I really enjoy the process with the snow. I think for my research it could be different with ice, because ice has a different surface area, and also it was still on the cold side here, so it melted slowly, so a slow melt versus a fast melt. Um, yeah, very interesting. I had a lot of fun. I have already pieces in mind, one of them being the, the Loon and the Chat Noir. So I gotta get started on that. I just have to decide which piece is going to go for which project. Um, they're all gonna be cat themed. I don't know if you noticed, but I have a black cat and I feel like I have to stitch some things for him. And of course now that I'm talking about him, he's gone. Cats, right? So that is my cross stitching plans. And if that's all you're interested in, that is it for the cross stitch. I am going to talk about some other craft projects and books, so you can stick around for that. Okay, so other crafty plans. I went, when I was at Michael's, I ended up buying some more fabric bundles. Just like these, right here. And like here. Because I know I talked about making my own project bag and showed the fabric, and then I got scared. I mean, I was already cut up into like a little square, so I just need to chain piece them and then finish the whole thing up. But I got scared of chain piecing, I, especially because it's just like little bits. So I thought I would do just some simple block ones and get that finished as like a confidence booster with my sewing machine. And now he's back and scratching on his scratching post. You just come over here, like if you're going to be like that. Yeah, you don't tell, get to tell a cat what to do. <laughs> so yeah, so I thought I'd just make these into like some simpler, um, like not a vinyl front or anything. Nothing complicated, just the big zip, like Ziploc bag style project bags because just to increase my own confidence with my sewing machine and my making the smaller bags and adding zippers and things. And so, because if they don't turn out, I'm not as upset because it was just Michael's fabric. And then if it does turn out, hey, I've got some project bags. And I feel like it's a win win. And now he's playing with the baby gate. Why? He's been quiet all day and now he's just making all the noises. Oh well. Um, so, and while I was shopping, uh, this is another reason I want to get better at my sewing. Um, Susie Quilt. Susie Quilt is launching um, a sew along for her new quilt pattern, which is the Starling, the Starling quilt. And it's layer cake friendly. And I've had this layer cake that I bought because I um, it's through the woods by Sweetfire Road. And it's 
You can still get the yardage in the States fairly easily, but it's fairly hard to find in Canada because it's one of the older rum patterns. And it's just like grays, yellows, and creams, and it's like celestial, celestial forest and owl theme, so it's pretty much up my alley of interest. If it was like you know, blue or green instead of yellow, it would have been like perfect. So it's like I said, this pattern's layer cake friendly, so I want to use that. And when I went out, I got the backing fabric for it, which is just the Grunge Moto, and I think this will be very perfect together. And it's basically just like a four week sewing challenge. Like this week, it's pick your fabric, next week, it's cut cut your fabric the week after it's sewn together and then the fourth week is to finish it. I won't be finishing it either like the, the well, like the quilting and the backing because I don't have a backing or a binding picked out yet. I have some ideas. I wasn't able to find anything yet. And also I kind of, I, I like I said, I just have some ideas that I just don't want to rush myself but I think if I get three of the four steps done in the first week, the first month, like I'll have my first finished quilt top which was one of my goals for the year. So I'm excited about that. And while there, I also bought a tailor's clapper. This thing is supposed to be magic for your seams when you're sewing. And it's handmade, like locally, and was a fairly reasonable price. And so I will have to tell you if this is like the best thing for like pressing your seams open or not. We'll find out. Worst comes to worst, I have a nice giant wooden block. <laughs> so yeah, that is everything I've got for crafts. And then just a quick little book talk. Um, I've read a lot because it's been a couple weeks, and I'm just going to fly through that. I read Venko by Cherry, Cherry Damaline. Yeah, she's a Canadian Indigenous author. She writes a lot of speculative fiction. Venko is a bit of a coven of witches, you know, uh, with roots in Salem, so I think that'll fit with a lot of people's interests. And um, it's about your found family and everything like that, and I really enjoyed that. I do think The Marrow Thieves is one of her stronger books, which is like a futuristic which is, a, which is a futuristic uh, interpretation of uh, kind of, I guess, a post-apocalyptic in a way. And it does kind of touch in on like res residential school themes, so I would say. I read Stone Blind by Nally Hines, which is a retelling of the Medusa myth. I love that uh, Greek mythology is having this feminist retelling day in the sun because teenager me would have been all over all of this and I'm still, like, I'm still reading all of it, but like I'm being a little bit more critical as an adult. I am a little tired of all the Persephone ones. Um, I would say only Laura Olympus so far has gotten my seal of approval of being a, as a good reinterpretation. A lot of them are just trying to be dark romances of Persephone and Hades, which I can see where that would come from, but I'm not I'm not compelled to them as like they're as as the characters. It, it's window dressing and fluff for me rather than actually being a reinterpretation that deals with the the Greek mythology. And like I think Natalie Hines does a really good job. I know some people didn't like Stone Blind because of the multiple viewpoints. I think that is very good at reinterpreting how Greek, Greek plays were told with the chorus and such and like the multiple viewpoints and of, and of the epics and such. So I think that's actually a selling point rather than a detractor part. I read The Atlas Paradox by Olivia Olivia Blake, which is the sequel to The Atlas Choice. Um, I think that suffers from the second book blues as it were because there's a lot of talking and a lot of wheel spinning, not a lot of plot happening because there's a third book. And so it could have been shorter or there could have been more more interesting subplots as it were to bring us back to the main plot. Um, and yeah, it, it could have been, I don't know, I'll have to read the third book to see how I feel about the subplots. But to me it was a lot of talking without actual actions. And then I read An, an Unkindness of Magicians, I think it's by Cat Howard. And it's just, again, a dark academia, postgraduate universe, wizard university school with duels. And I thought the magic system there was really unique. And the questions of how people deal with the system that both benefits and oppresses them, and how they deal with finding that out, is I thought it was a very interesting, and I like that it was a standalone. And then lastly, I read What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher, um, which is a retelling of the fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe, and it's a lot of what I wanted Mexican goth Gothic to be, you know, the, the haunted house story. And, you know, but, and it's just her humor is so fantastic, it's creepy, it's very atmospheric, it's only 150 pages, so if you don't like it, you haven't really invested more than afternoon, evening in it. And I enjoyed her... I like I enjoyed her humor, I enjoyed, I enjoyed her world building, um, I, 
So, you know, it's not just sort of like an English retelling, right? It's her, its own distinct world, but you can definitely see how it was based on our world. And the aunt, a fictional aunt of Beatrix Potter is a character with an interest in mushrooms. So, or, I mean, what a fantastic character to introduce to the world. And I've already mentioned I have an interest in Beatrix Potter, so I was happy with that char fictional character introduced and her mentionings of her niece and her niece's much better artistic abilities. So that is everything I've been up to, and I hope to show up again in like two weeks and have caught up more of my stitch alongs and maybe have some finished objects to show. Thanks for everyone for watching and commenting and interacting with me. It, really, it's my highlight to when I get to interact and have conversations with people. And I hope to see, um, well, I hope to see you all. I hope to be, I hope that you're seeing me again in a couple of weeks and enjoying the content. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Also, the distraction of the cats meant I forgot. Uh, one thing I actually wanted to mention is I'm part of my very first um, stitch along. It is the heart sampler by Big Bad Vibes because on uh, tra the Transgender Day of Visibility, Mar Marion Crafts, I think it's Marion, she posted um, the heart sampler by Big Bad Vibes and it was gorgeous. And then Megan, who is half of the long distance stitchers, posted on her stories saying, Ooh, we should, like, who wants to do a stitch along? And I was like, I'm in. And we came up with the hashtag Big Bad Heart Stitch Along. And I will be starting that, I think, tomorrow is when my fabric arrives. And if you were one of the people that did the Love Bug samplers, it is the same floss colors, more or less, maybe a shade or two different. Very similar vibe. So, you know, if you want to keep going, have a little companion piece, if you weren't already doing the mushrooms, you should join in. And it's no set date, no set start date, no set end date, just want to stitch some rib cages and anatomically correct hearts. So join in the fun and hope to see you there with the hashtag. Okay, bye again.